Progression on me, progression on three. No plugins, we live. I got Steven, the Bitcoiner. Steven Cole, let me let me just go ahead and give y'all a brief introduction to my man's here and why I got this special segment of no plugins for y'all. My man Steven here is a Bitcoiner, investor, educator, and the founder of the Orange County Bitcoin Network. We connected through the song that I put together a long time ago, what, like a year or two ago, called um, Spence, Bitcoin Spencino. And we were able to work together today and stay tuned to a lot more content coming. But, Steven, what's up, bro? Hey, appreciate you having me. Yeah. It's good to be here. Love the, the Bitcoin on Cash App video. Straight up. It's the magic of Twitter. Salute. So, Salute. Appreciate it. And bro, we got to talk about all of that. Now, I'm a very, I'm very interested in Bitcoin, always have been, and I'm sure a lot of the followers know that. And I think it's important that we get what I would, um, what I would label an expert opinion in here. So let's jump straight in. First thing is my disclaimer. Any question I ask you is not meant to offend you. You know what I mean? If I ask you something that you don't want to talk about, because I'm going to ask. Just let me know, and we'll cut it out. Nobody will ever know, and, you know, it'll be all smooth. But Sounds good, but ask away. Open book. Straight up. All right, so first of all, let's talk about you and your background. First of all, you Stephen Cole, how did you get into Bitcoin? Yeah, sure. So I got into Bitcoin around, I started hearing about it, like, 2013. Mm -hmm. I was working out in San Francisco in the Bay Area at the time. And my background was in tech, so I was kind of working for tech companies and came at it a little bit from the, the like, internet tech side of things. Um, but I was also really interested in, like, how money works, mm -hmm. economics and kind of finance, and had, like, a casual interest in that. And so I think since Bitcoin touches on both of those things, like technology and also money, um, it really sparked my interest and got me curious. And so I started learning a little bit. I totally dismissed it the first time I heard of it, right? Because I figured yeah. <laughs> it was just like another payment app. Sure. Right? Like there's so many of those. There's like PayPal, there's Venmo, there's Visa, there's MasterCard, and there's like a new thing all the time. So the first time I heard of Bitcoin, I just shrugged it off. I was like, oh, yeah. it's just another way to pay. I don't really need that. Um, I wish I would have paid more attention earlier. Right. Because uh, it, it turns out, right, it's a lot more than just a way to pay. It's a lot more than just a way to, like, send money from one place to another. It's actually a whole new type of money entirely. And so when that hit me, I was just like, damn, like, I got to learn more. Right. I got to read as much as I can. And so then, like, 2014, I started looking a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. And and get into it and dabble in investing in it. And uh, yeah, and then rewind like a couple of years ago, I started a meetup group around it, the Orange County Bitcoin Network. So mm -hmm. just trying to kind of help educate people on it, um, you know, make it accessible to them, help people figure out in their context like what this whole Bitcoin thing is mm -hmm. and why it might matter. Straight up, straight up. And yeah, we'll get deeper into what Bitcoin is and why it matters to, for here later in the interview. But um, the next thing I want to know is, I value your opinion on Bitcoin, but do you con would you consider yourself an expert on the topic of Bitcoin? Ooh, I almost have an aversion to the word expert. You know, like I, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. but part of the reason I say that is because there are so many scams out there in the cryptocurrency space, and mm -hmm. so many people who are quick to try to convince you that like they're an expert and you should you know, go invest in some coin that they created. True. And so I think almost as like defense against that mentality, it's, you know, I would advise everybody to just be cautious when they get into this whole stuff. If somebody comes at you screaming like, I'm an expert, I know best, you should listen to me, you should buy my thing, just go slow, mm -hmm. ask around, get a lot of different opinions and input. Um, but yeah, Bitcoin has been my passion for years, so most of my waking hours, I have been trying to just learn more about it, be more active in it, and help kind of advance the cause of Bitcoin. So, yeah. Sweet. So, um, w do you have any accolades or accomplishments relating to Bitcoin or other cryptos? Uh, I don't know about accolades or accomplishments. I mean, in terms of activity that I've done in the space, um, I've 
spoke in like universities, um, various settings, you know, kind of chambers of commerce and different businesses to help merchants understand Bitcoin. Uh, had traveled the world and, you know, got people like in Indonesia and Africa set up accepting Bitcoin as payment. Uh, I've invested in Bitcoin startups in the space over the last couple of years. That's been a big focus of mine. And then at the Orange County Bitcoin Network, we've grown stuff quite a bit. So we only started our group about a year ago and we're already like past 400 members. We've been putting on some good presentations and events, content out there on YouTube. Uh, so it's been busy and been doing a lot. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so one more question regarding to your background, and that is the um, Orange County Bitcoin Network. Could you ex kind of explain, elaborate on what that is? For sure. Um, you know, very humble beginning. So on meetup.com, like, you know, you can go out there and find groups for anything you're interested in. If you want to find a meetup to go learn about hiking or investing or anything, then anybody can just go out and start one for free. So meetups are a great way to learn about Bitcoin, especially if you're in like a city or an area with enough people where there are a bunch of Bitcoiners out there you can connect with. So we started as just like a, a meetup group um, for Bitcoin because there wasn't really one in Orange County. And there was a lot of stuff on cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of stuff on blockchain, but I tend to think those are overhyped. Um, I don't actually think blockchain technology has as much promise as a lot of people say that it has. And I don't think a bunch of the cryptocurrencies have as much promise as people say that they have. I think Bitcoin itself is the really big deal. And so we were setting out to start a group that just focused on that and helping Sweet. educate people about that. So we've been doing monthly events for the last year, some on YouTube during these interesting COVID times, um, in person in Orange County, uh, in addition to that. So it's been good, we've grown a lot. Now, you know, it's a whole community of people that's ready to bite your head off based off of that oh, blockchain uh, theory. I know, that's fighting words. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin for beginners. Do you, I, I know this, this could be a whole six hour segment, sure. but, um, you know, I trust that you can keep it kind of short and yep. concise for people. But let's start off by asking, what is Bitcoin? Yeah, it's a very, very good and broad question. Um, Bitcoin is, I mean, I think the most important thing Bitcoin represents is like a chance for people to take back control of their money. Um, and I think it, Bitcoin is a new type of money, essentially. And in my opinion, it's the most powerful tool that people have available to them to really like take back some freedom and like a tool for social good. And it's unfortunate because most people don't really see it that way yet. If you look at the mainstream media and mm -hmm. how it frames Bitcoin, sometimes it's like, oh, this is a drug money just used on the black market, Silk Road and all that. It's got this really negative connotation. But I think Bitcoin has the potential to like change the world in some profound, positive, huge ways. Uh, so that's what makes me excited about it. It's, it, it's digital money. Um, a lot of people they phrase it like digital gold mm -hmm. because the same way like gold is very limited. Nobody can just like print more gold very easily. The same is kind of true with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things for anybody to understand if you're like near to Bitcoin is that it's limited. And that's crazy. Like that it's sounds important. simple, but when you actually think about that, it gets kind of wild mm -hmm. because we're used to like the internet and computers, right? Where anything digital that's on those you can just copy it really easily. Mm -hmm. If I got like a picture on my phone or on my laptop, or if I have an MP3, like a song, then it's really easy to just copy that and mm -hmm. make a million copies really easily. So the idea of something that's digital, like something that's on a computer that you only have a limited number of, mm -hmm. is like, is tough. Like that's a new concept and it takes a while to wrap your head around. Yeah. And I know like I heard, when I heard that for the first time, I was like, oh, that's bullshit. Like, yeah, right. There's no way to like limit, Straight you up. can't, that's not how computers work. Yeah. Um, so I was skeptical. I went into it thinking it was wrong. I asked a ton of questions, spent a lot of time trying to learn. And like the more skepticism and questions that I threw at it, the more answers I found, the more I started to be like, damn, this could actually work. Sure. So, so there's only, yeah, there's only 21 million Bitcoin that are ever gonna exist. Nobody controls it. It's kind of like 
the internet or even like the English language, right? Where there's no, it's not like there's a company called Bitcoin with a CEO who makes all the decisions about what it is. Um, it's just this decentralized system without any real leader or point of control. So even if people wanted to change it, even if really powerful people like the president or the government or a bunch of tech companies wanted to change Bitcoin, they kind of can't. Straight up. And that's powerful. That makes it very like, powerful. Yeah, yeah. And so they can't, you know, they, it's easy for them to print more dollars. Nobody can print more Bitcoin. Straight up. Only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever exist forever, no matter how much anybody wishes otherwise. So I think it's a huge opportunity, like the first people to kind of realize that and act on it and maybe grab some of this future money, I think that's a huge deal. Yeah, that's important. Now, of course, we can go way deeper, like blockchain and Bitcoin mining and all that good stuff. I definitely advise people to go do your research. This is just an introduction. Um, but Stephen, another question I got for you is, how much money do you need to actually get started buying Bitcoin? Yeah, that's a great question because it's not like a stock. So a lot of people will see the price of Bitcoin on their app and like, you know, we're recording this. I think the price today is like 11,700 US dollars. It's like almost 12 grand mm -hmm. to, to buy a whole Bitcoin. So some people see that and they're like, oh damn, I don't have 12 grand to like drop on this, you know, thing. I don't, it's like new to me. Um, so they get turned away because they assume it's like a stock. But in Bitcoin, you don't have to buy an entire Bitcoin. You can buy a small fraction of a Bitcoin. They're, they can be divided up into really, really small fractions. Mm -hmm. In fact, like smaller than a penny. So if you want to put five bucks into Bitcoin, for sure, that's easy to do. Um, you can download an app, you can download like Cash App, um, there's another one called Swan Bitcoin, and you can just start putting in whatever amount you're comfy with. If you wanna make some weekly budget of like $5 a week, $50 a week, whatever number it is for, for your situation, then you can just like start accumulating. Bitcoin. So what happens to your money once you put it into a Cash App or whatever platform you're purchasing on? It varies, like typically the way those apps work is they'll connect to your bank account. So you like install the app, you'll give them your, uh, you know, debit card information or checking account information, and then they'll kind of link you up and you essentially just buy whatever amount of Bitcoin you're comfortable with and they take your dollars, they give you Bitcoin back. And usually behind the scenes, that means that they are kind of storing those Bitcoin for you. Mm -hmm. So like if you buy on say Swan Bitcoin or on Cash App, then Know, they take your dollars and they give you Bitcoin, but they're holding on to those Bitcoin. So those Bitcoin are like on the computers that they own and they control. So you don't really have to worry about like keeping it safe or storing it yourself. But if you learn more and you get to the point to where you don't want to like trust anybody else to store your money, then you can withdraw them and like store them yourself. You can put them on your phone, put them on your laptop. There are all kinds of different solutions for how to keep them safe. But you can like really own your money that way. Straight up. All right, so another question I have for you is, is it a myth that people can actually get rich overnight investing in Bitcoin? It's possible, but it's unlikely, and I would not recommend going into it with that mentality. Um, a lot of people, if you kind of go into it with the get rich quick mentality, this space is the Wild West. There are a lot of scams out there. There's a lot of people who will try to convince you to buy a lot of things or even to buy Bitcoin in certain ways through like sketchy services. And so you can get burned really easily. Um, I would recommend going into it with kind of a long-term mindset. So, uh, you know, start like Bitcoin is by far the most popular cryptocurrency in terms of just like the most money that's in it today, uh, the most developers, the most biggest community that's behind it. So I consider it by far the safest. Um, I don't, really mess around with any of the other cryptocurrencies as investments anymore. I did once upon a time, you know, I probably owned like 20 or 40 different coins, Ethereum, Litecoin, all these others over the years. Uh, but the more that I learned about how money works and just thought about the future, the more I see Bitcoin kind of being the one, like taking all that from the others. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into it expecting Bitcoin to make you rich overnight. I would go into it in kind of a responsible way. And I wouldn't even say like 
try to time it too much when you get started because people see the price changes in Bitcoin and they start to stress about that. They mm-hmm. think like, oh, it's almost 12 grand today and it was, you know, 10 grand like last week. And so, you know, if I just time it right, then I can like make a lot really quick. Mm-hmm. And maybe if you get lucky, but it's so hard to call the short term action and you just, you know, you'll stress yourself out so much by trying. So over time, the strategy that I've employed and that I recommend to other people is just to do like automatic buys on a regular basis. Maybe it's monthly, maybe it's weekly, maybe it's even daily, but just like having that kind of happen and you don't have to worry. Like if it tanks tomorrow or if it goes way up tomorrow, then you just continue buying over time. And so it like drowns out all that noise of the short term action. Okay, so I got another question that I wish somebody would have answered for me when I first started getting into Bitcoin, and that's this. Do you think people should find out what Bitcoin is, then buy, or buy, then find out what it is? Mm. Uh, man, it's tough because, you know, on one hand, you it's often good practice to, like, learn about something you're investing in. That's generally a very responsible thing to right. do. Uh, so some initial research is certainly great. Uh, but at the same time, Bitcoin is such a huge topic that like, like I've been in it for years and I learn new stuff about it every week still. Like yeah. to this day, I'm just like, you know, the rabbit hole is deep, right? When it comes to this Bitcoin stuff. Right. So you can just sit on the sidelines for way too long too. So I, I'd say some kind of in the middle approach where it's like, get some skin in the game right now. Like if the idea of money that you control and that governments don't and that nobody else does, like if that resonates with you and if you think that, you know, it could be cool or whatever, then put a little bit in. Um, And then that kind of gets you some skin in the game. For sure. And, you know, you'll feel that. Mm -hmm. You'll like, you'll be incentivized to go and want to do more research, learn more about it. And the more you learn, if you're still comfy, you can put more in. That's right. Okay, so do you think Cash App is a good place to buy Bitcoin? Yeah, Cash App's cool. Um, I li- I'd say avoid Coinbase. Coinbase is a pretty popular company in the U.S. Um, they have a history, in my opinion, of course, of like not being very good citizens of the Bitcoin network. I think they've kind of put their own business interests ahead of the long-term health of Bitcoin in on multiple occasions. So for almost philosophical reasons that tend to like guide people away from Coinbase. Coinbase is also just like making it rain like all coins. Like they have a bunch of different coins that you can buy on Coinbase, right? It's like Bitcoin and then they have their whole casino of yeah. like other coins that I've never even heard of anymore. So uh, it's a little bit of Coinbase hate, I know, but, but uh, Cash App's great. Um, love the team there, everything they're doing. Uh, I, Swan Bitcoin is another I'd recommend. Full disclosure, I'm an investor in Swan, so like do your own research, all that stuff. But uh, but they make it easy to do automatic buys in Sweet. the U.S. Um, yeah, bro, so plug yeah. it, bro, plug it's, it. Yeah, yeah, Swan Bitcoin, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so do you think that Bitcoin is a more risk, is it more risk in investing in Bitcoin than in just the regular stock market? Depend like in some ways, so Bitcoin's much more volatile than the stock market, meaning like the price will just change. It's like a roller coaster short term, right? So I say just brace for that. Like that's not going away in Bitcoin anytime soon. Um, and that can be it can be scary, but that's also opportunity. Like the price going way up, that's volatility, you know? Um, exactly. And price going way up could be really good for you if you're it was good for me. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's risky. I mean, in general, diversifying into different assets is cool. It's, I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody go all in in Bitcoin unless you really know what you're doing and For you're sure. like passionate about it. But the government's also been doing some sketchy stuff uh, in the economy lately. Like these last few months, they've been printing like trillions of dollars, just like bringing new money into the world. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that goes into stocks. So in my opinion, the government has been trying to make the stock market seem okay by printing money. And it's almost like artificially overvaluing those stocks, right? Mm -hmm. And so I worry the stock market's kind of disconnected from reality. Like stock market's all-time highs right now, 
if you look around, we're like in COVID mode and all these businesses are closed and there's just like a lot of the economy is kind of suffering. Mm -hmm. And so that difference is a little scary, right? So at this point in time, I'm much more comfortable with Bitcoin than stocks. Yeah. But they're both good in different ways, different times for sure. Okay, so can you give me three reasons, if you got it off the top of your head, this is no mm -hmm. plug-in, so you probably don't got that much time, but no can plug. you give me three reasons why Bitcoin is a better currency than cash? For sure. That is one of my favorite things that I can yeah. knock those out all day. <laughs> um, so, like, first of all, Bitcoin's uncensorable. That's one big important piece. You can pay anybody in Bitcoin and nobody can stop you. Um, there's a lot of situations where it's either too expensive because these big companies have predatory practices and really high fees. Like, if you want to send money overseas, a lot of people have family overseas. They'll be trying to like work a job in one place, support a family in another place, and like sending money between those two places can be unreasonably expensive and yeah. just like difficult sometimes. Um, Bitcoin fixes that. Like there are ways to send Bitcoin very cheaply from one place to another, and importantly, nobody can like stop anyone from doing it, no matter what country you're in or whatever. It's just the internet. It's just a Bitcoin address, so you can pay whoever you want in Bitcoin. Uh, it's limited, we talked about that, 21 million, only 21 million Bitcoin. They're printing trillions of dollars all the time. So like the more dollars they create, then you know, eventually some of that is gonna like find its way into Bitcoin, right? That's and right. the value of something scarce that's like Bitcoin is gonna rise. It's the same reason like real estate or gold goes up when they print a bunch of dollars. Right. But Bitcoin is even more scarce than those things. Like. They can always build more houses, they can build more real estate, they can find more gold in the, you know, there's a lot of oceans out there, there's a lot of like, you know, land that they haven't dug in yet, and there's mm -hmm. even like asteroids out there in space that might have gold on it. Right. But there's only 21 million Bitcoin. That's right. And it's crazy, like how limited it is, is crazy. Sometimes I don't think I even understand right. the implications of that limit. Um, but that fact that nobody can print more, that's the big number too. So, uncensorable, scarce, and resistant, like nobody can take it. I'd say that's the big third one. It's like the, the fancy term you'll hear is like seizure resistant, but basically, you know, if governments or whoever is in power wants to, it's kind of easy for them to take stuff that you own today, you know? Um, they can seize your bank account, they can take money out of your bank account, they can take your property, take your vehicles, they can kick your door down, they can take your gold or whatever you got. You? Yeah, they can take you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Taking you will always be a problem. That'll be a problem for a while, right. for sure. But they can't take your Bitcoin. Like, if you've properly Thanks. secured your Bitcoin, if you control those, you can, you can have the... Think of it like a really long password that, you know, nobody else in the world can take your Bitcoin unless they have that. You could put that on a bookmark, you could put it on your cell phone, you can put it in your brain, you can memorize it and walk across borders wherever you want to go, and nobody can take that from you. Bex. And that's the first time, certainly since we've been alive, maybe in human history, that that's like, that we've ever had something that we can keep safe in that way. Okay, so another question I have for you is if somebody, say, between the age of like 18 and 35 right now and they're looking for a legit retirement investment, yeah. would you suggest Bitcoin to somebody? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say have some. Uh, you know, it, even if you're in a lot of stuff, it's just a good way to like diversify and have you know, one more asset to that. And it's just got such high upside. Mm -hmm. Like Bitcoin's, it was only created 10 years ago. And for the first few years, it was just this like hobbyist, you yeah. know, computer hacker thing nobody even knew about. It's really young and has so much potential compared to all these other things that you could put money into, right? Sure. So like, if you think about the, the market cap of Bitcoin, which is just like how much money is kind of stored in the system, when we're recording this, I think it's about like $200 billion that all of Bitcoin is worth mm -hmm. in the whole world. And like Jeff Bezos, like the richest dude, you know, CEO of Amazon, he's almost worth 
that much. You know, I don't remember his net worth, but he's like, you know, over a hundred billion dollars, I think, or like up into the billions of dollars. Like one single person is worth almost as much as this thing that could be the world's future money. That's right. That's crazy. Like, like gold is worth trillions of dollars. It's maybe like 10 trillion. Mm -hmm. And so if Bitcoin gets even a small slice of that, then that's huge. That's right. like Bitcoin's Especially. worth way much more than it is yeah. today. It's like hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars in, you know, in the future. Who knows? But the potential is there if it works in the way that many people think it could. That's right. Well, that's our beginner segment of this interview. Let's right. jump into a little bit more about you now. Um, so you kind of told us how you got into Bitcoin, but like, what's, what's like your career history? Yeah, I'm, I'm from the Midwest originally. Um, I know you do a lot of good things around Tulsa, Tulsa That's right. Progression. That's sure. right. <laughs> um, I'm from Missouri originally, so born in Kansas City, uh, moved to a smaller town by Joplin, Missouri for kind of high school and college years. Mm -hmm. I study, my background is computer science, so I studied computer science in Missouri. Then I wanted to do the Silicon Valley thing. I wanted to like get a foot in the door um, out in the, the heart of the internet industry. So. I started as an engineer at eBay, um, working there for about four years, and then eventually kind of became fascinated with the whole idea of like a small startup. And I had no idea what the hell that was like, you know, like what a startup company even was. Yeah. Uh, but some people I knew were going over to a small company, so I joined that, kind of fell in love with the startup scene. So I uh, worked for some tiny tech startups around San Francisco for about, you know, two three years for one, a couple of years for the other. Um, worked for Intel for a little bit. So Intel bought one of the startups that I worked at. And so spent some time out at Intel too, which was cool. Now, I was mostly managing software teams during that time. Sweet. So kind of came at it from the tech angle, but, but uh, have shifted like the last couple of years going more to the investing side and the finance side has been something I've been trying to focus on and always just had that casual interest too in like economics and politics and philosophy and like why money is important you know straight up like, like the difference that a society can can see if it's based on good money versus bad money straight up like, straight up okay so now let's talk about your bitcoin life uh how does your profits compared to your losses with Bitcoin, with cryptos, not even Bitcoin, but just cryptos in general? Yeah. Let's see. So I started dabbling in, you know, I've been like dabbling for a few years now. So 2014, I think was when I bought like my first small slice of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, and Bitcoin is really volatile in the short term, but if you zoom out and you look at it like years over years, mm -hmm. then it has gone up quite a bit. So like Overall, it's been a positive return for me. It's been like a you know life-changingly positive thing for me. Uh, it, it's possible though to like have, to buy and then have it tank and have that scare you away. Yeah. So actually, I feel kind of fortunate because when I first started getting into Bitcoin, I think the price was like eight hundred dollars. It mm -hmm. just had this huge run up to a thousand bucks, and that was like the first time it was hitting those levels. Yeah, and then. I started buying when it like dipped down to 800 and I felt like a genius at first yeah. and then it was crashing to like 200 yeah. and so immediately I was going through that like am I, it's like, yeah, am I an idiot that I just get scammed by this magic internet money stuff um, so it like forces you to kind of challenge your assumptions, mm -hmm. figure out if you want to exit or like double down and just how you feel about it so I had to wrestle with all of that really early on and and then over the years, yeah, I became just more confident and started putting more in. I've, I've made and lost some money, like gambling on altcoins, yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. over the years. Um, <laughs> shit coins, the unkind term. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, that's what shit coins. That. So, yeah, I did some, some degen shitcoin gambling. Uh, there were, like, phases where I felt like, oh, you know, maybe these other coins will, like, threaten Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. so... Some of it was the process of learning, where I like I thought these coins had legitimate potential, and so I wanted to like put some money into it in case they did. Um, and then some of it was more like, okay, I, even if this coin is garbage, I think it's going to like go up like crazy over the next few months. So I'm going to try to invest and time that. Yeah. 
and you learn a lot along the way as you win yeah. some, you lose some, but I think Thanks. it's like a casino, you know? I, uh, I'd say I'm about even when it comes to, to gambling on the altcoins. It's sweet, though. I'm, I'm, I appreciate the honesty, right? Okay, so I got one more question um, before we switch topics. It's a little different, but I, I just personally want to know, what is your opinion on, like, 401k? 401k is good. It's like one of those things that's so recommended in society, right? Everybody will kind of be like, oh, you need to have a 401k, mm -hmm. and a lot of the tax advantages that come with it sound nice in theory. I think it's fine, especially if you're like at a corporate gig where they have like a really attractive 401k program, whatever job you're at, yeah. um, then you know, sure, do it. And if there are ways where your employer is going to match a contribution to it, then mm -hmm. that's almost, you know, that's a pretty nice incentive. So it's nice to have. Um, I don't actively contribute to my like full transparency. I don't contribute to my 401k anymore. I had one once upon a time. Mm -hmm. um, I started putting that into Bitcoin instead because I think that a lot of the, just where we are in like these big world cycles and all the stuff that's been happening with the stock market, I'm not as confident in stocks and a lot of the things that you can easily touch with 401ks. Uh, and I'm also just not as comfortable with like other big banks and governments being able to control my assets. I like that Bitcoin gives me control over yeah. my money. Um, that approach isn't for everybody, but it's kind of the two sides. I, pr I appreciate it. You know, we're talking about it. It's no plugins, you know? So yeah. All right, so I got a last few questions for you. A little bit, I guess we could say more advanced to somebody who's not really into cryptos. But um, what one, one thing is, would you advise day trading cryptos? No, I mean, not unless you like really want to make that your job. If you really want to focus on it, practice at it, and like be disciplined about it and develop a strategy, then maybe. And yeah. even then, it's super risky. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think a lot of these people just see the get rich quick stories. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are a few of them out there that are really valid. And they think, oh, it's, you know, if I just find the right website and the mm -hmm. right coin at the right time, that I can retire in a year. And that I would not recommend. That's dangerous. It's you risky. Get burned. I've, a lot lost, of I've lost a lot of money. I've got burned <laughs> on coins by thinking I can time the market. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so um, would you say that gold is a better investment than cryptos right now? Or I guess long term? I respect gold. Gold has been around for thousands of years. It was like the best money humanity had for a long time. Um, I think it. I think it can be great, and I think it will. You know, go up. It's been going up a lot in the last couple months with all the money printing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that continues, but I think if you're zooming out and you're like investing for the long run, I think the opportunity in Bitcoin could be better. That's because right. A lot of people understand. Gold already in it by people who already understand it and not as many people know about Bitcoin not as many people uh, have any idea that Bitcoin is as limited as it is and that there won't it's like you can't create more Bitcoin like you can find more gold so on a long enough timeline I think Bitcoin is gonna actually take a lot of gold's value away too mm -hmm. but that'll take a while if it does happen yeah, yeah, short yeah, term yeah. gold's cool gold is cool Okay, so another question is, can you tell us what you know about how, <laughs> it's a long question, about how the U.S. government feels about Bitcoin? Yeah, it kind of depends. Like, the government's such a big entity, right? There's, like, so many different pieces to it. Mm -hmm. And it's all over the board. Like, the there are parts of the government that are still just trying to figure it out. Well, I'd say overall, most of them are still like trying to figure out what in the world this thing is. Uh, and it's confusing because, you know, like the IRS will think that it's one thing and then a different part of government will think that it's something else. Got so it. you get all these different definitions. Um, right now, I think the government's been okay about Bitcoin. There are some governments around the world that are like, nah, it's like hard stop on Bitcoin. You know, mm -hmm. it's illegal to use Bitcoin or to, it's very restrictive on what you can do with it. Um, and then there are other governments like Singapore or you know even the U.S. are pretty accepting mm -hmm. of Bitcoin. 
So right now, I think government's still trying to figure out what it is mostly cool with it. But long term, Bitcoin does have the potential to like take some power from government and give it back to people, like back to individuals. Straight up. And the more that that happens and the more they understand it, the more there might be this tension, right? Or mm-hmm. this battle that kind of starts to happen. So that's why I think like more individuals getting into Bitcoin and like taking control of them, like actually having your Bitcoin in a way that the governments can't just grab, it can't just like cancel like a bank mm-hmm. account, then the better position you'll be if, if that tension does come later down the road. Facts. Okay, so my last question is basically this. We've we probably got about 25 to 30 minutes of content. Would you say that a, um, a beginner on Bitcoin just only seeing this has enough information that we've produced enough information for them to go ahead and jump into the Bitcoin space? And if yes, how much would you suggest? If no, then no. <laughs> you know I mean? uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, everybody's circumstance is different, but I think the just getting like $5 skin in the game, I think there's just a big mental barrier, right, that people will create in their head of, I have to think really hard before I buy Bitcoin. But then after they do that and they like pass on Bitcoin, they'll go out to the mall and they'll buy something they don't need, like on a whim, right? They'll be like, oh, this is like, you know, $50 shirt here or this thing here and I'll buy that. Mm -hmm. And so that difference is really interesting, right? Bitcoin just feels so new and so scary that I think some people are afraid to kind of, kind of get their feet wet with it, right? Um, And I'd say just, yeah, don't make it such a big deal in your head. Download Cash App, download Swan takes, you know, get verified and set up, takes less than a day, and then buy five bucks, buy ten bucks worth. And Straight up. Low risk, uh, yeah. worst case, you lose that amount, and then best case, it goes up, and, you, right. got, and you got started, and then if it goes up more, and you learn more, then it's just easy to add more on the best. Yeah, I made a $500 profit, well, I made well over a $500 profit, yeah. but I wish I would have hodled. <laughs> But I didn't, but you know, I definitely would suggest y'all jump into the Bitcoin space. I'm an advocate for it. Steven's an advocate. Do your research more than I encourage you to check out Bitcoin. I mean, and more than I encourage you to invest in Bitcoin. But, you know, get on board, man. Stop living in the past. This is the future. This is the age of flying cars, literally. So check out the new money. But um, that's pretty much all I got for you, Steven. You want to tell them where they can follow you at? Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I'm mostly on Twitter. Uh, so twitter.com slash S then C. Uh, yeah, Stephen Cole on Twitter. We got an account for the OC Bitcoin Network as well. Um, you can work twitter.com slash OC BTCN and Orange County Bitcoin Network on meetup.com. We're trying to do good things around Southern California, good things nationwide. Uh, if anybody's got questions about Bitcoin or any of this, just hit me up. Anytime. Hit him up, man. He's definitely a sharer. Go get some of that game. I, this is a funny question to ask you, but do you got any shout outs to make? <laughs> shout outs to make. Uh, shout out to Bitcoin Twitter. Um, That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No plug into this platform. Man. I appreciate that. I appreciate like you know you and artists like you kind of providing a platform to like bring Bitcoin into conversations that it's not already in, right? Like, up. There's a lot of Bitcoiners talking to Bitcoiners out there, Thanks. but actually like raising awareness of this and the willingness to like help get it in front of other people and make it accessible to other people is cool. So Thanks. appreciate it. Hey, if you go buy Bitcoin, don't get discouraged when the price dropped. The price dropped on me so many times, but at the end of the day, I prevail. So hodl, hold on for dear life, baby. No plugins. We got Stephen Cole, the Bitcoiner slash investor slash founder of OC Bitcoin Network slash educator slash a whole bunch of stuff. Get connected. No plugins. We checking out. Progression on me. Progression on three. Here we go. Seven days a week.